Let us now prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather here today filled with joy and thanksgiving for the gift of the Blessed Mary Eugene of the Child Jesus to the Church. We recall the 100-year anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood as well as his entrance into the Carmelite order. He has lived fully his grace as a priest and as a Carmelite in letting God act freely in him and in leading people to God. In this Eucharist, let us open ourselves to praise God the Father in the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With Bishop Denis Villarrojo of the Diocese of Malolos as our presider in this Mass of Thanksgiving, let us joyfully join in singing our entrance hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, rich in mercy, you have given blessed Marie Eugene of the child Jesus grace and light to guide your people towards the fullness of Christ through the way of contemplative prayer and missionary witness. Grant us through his prayer to grow in docility to the Holy Spirit and to work in faith for the coming of your kingdom, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I will lead them out from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the land's ravines and all its inhabited places. In good pastures will I pasture them, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing ground. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring them back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. scroll it is prescribed for me 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves, because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. Please be seated as we listen to the homily of our bishop. His Excellency Bishop Benjamin Almoneda, Emeritus of Daet, Father Alvin Lopez, Head of the Sacerdotal Branch, Ms. Sarah Palma, Head of the Feminine Branch of Notre Dame de Vie, Mr. Glenn de Leon, Head of the Masculine Branch, and Ms. Lourdes Domingo, District Superior of Notre Dame de Vie, Asia, 
my brother priests, dear sisters and brothers in Christ. The beatification of Blessed Marie Eugene was another outpouring of grace upon the Carmelite order and a confirmation of the Lord's favor upon Blessed Marie Eugene's work, the Institute Notre Dame de Vie. Today, we commemorate the 100th anniversary of his sacerdotal ordination. We thank the Lord for the continued blessing that he has given to the Institute and to the many men and women whose lives have touched many others by spreading the love flowing from the heart of Jesus. This secular institute consecrated life lived in the world is truly a leaven in the world today where a strict dichotomy seems to have been imposed between worldliness and total dedication to God. It is as if living and working in a secular environment have become incompatible with godliness. Thus, the need to bear witness to this way of life, a calling which is not to be seen only as a unique and special vocation, but is a pattern for all to experience God's presence in the world. Secularity, or in France, laicite, is understood as that space, space in which social life is outside the domain of religion. Religion is seen as a domain, a space where power and control are exercised. This is the reason why a space outside it must be created because religion was seen as power and control, a dominion. Secularity was therefore seen as a space of freedom where religion has no power, no control. Now this is of course an aberrant understanding of religion. This aberrant understanding is in part due to the excesses of some of those who teach and promote religion, who instead of binding religare, the root word for religion, men and women to God sought to strangle people with their own authority, sometimes marked by abuse. The work, therefore, of restoring God's presence in the world is not to expand the sphere of religion, but to, ex to share the experience of God's love. This, I think, is the primary insight of Blessed Marie Eugene, along with all the other great Carmelite saints. God is love, and our experience of the world must open our hearts to that love, because only in the embrace of that love can God also embrace the world. We might ask, why can't God simply embrace the world? and keep it in his stranglehold? Why does the world keep on slipping through his all-powerful arms when he could simply hold it in his grasp? Uh, but that would be religion in the aberrant sense. Love is not jealous, it is not possessive. God's love calls us in the freedom of our desires in the freedom of our desires. There seems to be a contradiction here. Desire, after all, does not always breed freedom. Our experience of it often ends up in bondage and servitude. Blessed Marie Eugene and the other Carmelite saints often speak of desire in terms of the overwhelming love of God, curtailed only by external restraints that keep, them, that keep them from realizing God's will right away. 
Blessed Marie Eugene discerns God's will for him to enter Carmel, but that desire is held back by the objections posed by his superiors, and more painfully, by the intractable will of his own mother. St. Therese of the child Jesus wanted to enter Carmel at an early age, but canonical norms prevented her from doing so right away. St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross wanted to reform the order against the resistance of their confers. It seems, therefore, that among the Carmelite saints, there is freedom in their desires, only the resistance of persons and circumstance hindered them from in immediately fulfilling God's will. But what about us, miserable beings that we are? We look into our hearts and we see only desires that pull us away from God. The majority of us who live in the world have only tepid love for God. In the same way that, as one writer puts it, a farmer loves his cow. We love God because we get benefits from Him. We do not love Him for His own sake. In the world, there may be fear of God. There may be need of God, but so little desire for Him. It is no wonder that God lets go of us as we pursue created things in the freedom of our desires, a freedom that diminishes every time we come into possession of an earthly desire because earth pulls us down to itself because the world's embrace is an ever-tightening grip on our spontaneity. The great Saint Paul laments in the letter to the Romans, Though the will to do what is good is in me, the power to do, to do it is not. The good thing I want to do, I never do. The evil thing which I do not want, that is what I do. What must we do in the face of this truth about human nature? How can we love God in the freedom of our desires, transcending fear and need as motives? How can we love God when the hindrance is not outside of ourselves, but deep within, covered over by the desires that make our hearts tepid? The first step is to listen to someone who has been there, not perhaps from the heights of Carmel, from the dark, but from the dark valleys of sin and vice. St. Augustine tells us our hearts are restless until they rest in you. This timeless passage finds an echo in J.K. Chesterton who says, the man who knocks on the door of a brothel, the house of prostitutes, is actually knocking on heaven's door. Pope Benedict XVI says something similar when he diagnoses in substance abuse a desire for transcendence. The drug addict longs for a love that he couldn't find in this world. You must recognize in the conflict of our desires a hidden longing for the one who created our hearts. The second step is provided for us by the Carmelite saints. It was St. John of the Cross who provided us with the image of the bird who cannot fly because a little thread held it fast to the ground. There is a need to cut and cut cleanly. St. Teresa of Avila describes the moat in her interior castle as populated by reptiles and all kinds of ugly little monsters, the faces of our sins. We must leave them outside if you must enter the interior castle. The Carmelite saints are one in telling us that to convert our desires, we must learn how to pray. For prayer is not just supplication and praise. It is also a path, a way, an arduous one at that, but one that will bring out the purity of all desires, once directed to the self and the world, 
but destined to lead us to God. The exercise of prayer, the ever-deepening plunge into an interior silence, has the purpose of converting our desires. Prayer, as conversion of desires, is tedious at the start. Like a farmer watering his farm by bringing in water from a distant well. But as we grow in prayer, it becomes easier as when a farmer irrigates his garden from a nearby river. But when God wills it and the soul truly desires it, He will send refreshing rain upon the garden, satiating its thirst and nourishing its plants. The trouble with our Carmelite saints is that they make it sound so easy. They are not entirely mistaken, however, if they gave us that impression. Prayer is God's initiative. It is God's work. He takes pleasure in bringing it to completion. The third step is to recognize this truth. Prayer is our desire seeking and finding its true object. A French woman I spoke to once told me that when she prays, she would close her eyes and clasp her hands together like this. And she said, the point where her fingers meet pointing towards heaven like an arrow is like an antenna that connects her to God. I think she was saying more than just posture in prayer. I think she was telling me that prayer is like adjusting the antenna on the roof in order to get a good reception on our TV sets back when we didn't have internet and signals were bad. You should remember the time when the reception in our TV is bad, so we send somebody over to the roof and say, adjust it, adjust it there. And sometimes you even have to hit the TV set. You have to strike it. Something like the spiritual life. We need to get knocked in the head sometimes to make clear our connection with God. The same imagery applies today. See how we take the trouble of going up the roof just to get a signal on our cell phones. Sometimes we have to go to a hill of a mo- or a mountain just to get a good signal. God's signal is everywhere. We just need to find a place where to catch it. Sometimes it means leaving a highly enclosed place to hear the signal better in an open space. Sometimes it means going to a higher place, a quieter place, a place of silence. God's signal is everywhere. We only need to find it. And this is what we have to do as secular institute, as individual Christians, as church, We need to break the divide between religion and the world and make everyone aware of God's presence in their lives. Make everyone feel and experience God's love in their lives. In the gospel today, Jesus did not say, as you love me, so I love you. He did not speak about love as reciprocity. Rather, he said, As the Father loves me, so I love you. The Father's love is prior. So is the love, is the Lord's love prior to ours. And he takes it for granted, for granted that we should remain in his love. We might wonder, how can I remain when I am not yet in his love? But we already are. You and I, each one of us, we are already in His love because His love is prior. Just as the Father loves Him, so He loves us. We are already in His love. We only have to remain there 
to stay and not to break away from it. We slip away from His embrace in pursuit of our desires, desires that, for all we know, already found fulfillment in His embrace. But because we did not understand ourselves, because we seek our freedom elsewhere, we wrestle away to find them elsewhere, outside of ourselves, to the exclusion of God. Blessed Mary Eugene taught us to bring God into the world and into religion too, for we may have religion without God. God's signal is everywhere, in the world, and in religion too. We only need to pick it up with our device. We need to teach the world and religion where to find it, how to find it, who to find it in. God's love pervades both world and religion. We only need to be sensitive to it, to share it, to live it, to be transformed by it. We need to break the barrier between the world and religion, the, world, the walls of the world which seek to keep God outside, and the walls of religion which seek to keep God inside, so that in the crumbling of the walls, God may be all in all. Please stand for the general intercessions. Celebrating in joy and in hope the fidelity of love and friendship of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we humbly present to Him our supplications as we say, Lord, listen to our needs. Lord, listen to our prayers. Let us pray for the Church. Grant that the Pope, all bishops and priests, especially the priests of Notre Dame de Vie, remain united with the Lord so that they may be steadfast in proclaiming the good news and believing witnesses of Christ amidst all hardships and sufferings in their pastoral ministry. We implore the Lord. Lord, Lord listen to our prayer. Let us pray for all consecrated persons. Notre Dame de Vito, Sobetenu, Hukenshano Tameni, Inorimas. Story story ga atairareta karisumani yori. Kamino megomini mio yodanete. Ikiro koto ga dekimasu yoni. Soshite subete no hito to itsumo fukuin no yorokobi o wakachiao koto ga dekimasu yoni. We implore the Lord. Lord, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for all nations. Que l'Esprit Saint vienne éclairer nos pays en cette période de difficulté et de choix. Qu'il guide toutes les nations dans un effort commun de justice, de paix et d'unité et qu'il inspire à chaque homme, à chacun de nous, les petits pas qui sont à notre portée pour participer à l'avènement du royaume de Dieu, notre Créateur et Rédempteur. We implore the Lord. Lord, listen to our prayer. Let us pray for the youth
请为年轻人祈祷，愿年轻人们能有开放的心，好听到天主，直系断的温柔召唤，其看见天主仁慈都过人常生活的陪伴，仪式。天主，年轻人能有能套上属于自己的幸福福道路，慷慨地在婚姻或先生生活中较多自己，聘乐于奉献所长。为社会、为为社会服务，为此，我们同声祈祷。Let us implore the Lord. Lord, listen to our prayer. Para sa mga may sakit at sa mga isinas isang tabi, unas sa laylaya ng lipunan. Upang sa tulong ng mga may magagandang loob, ay madama nila ang pagkalinga at pagmamahal ng Diyos. Let us implore the Lord. Lord, listen to our prayer. Father in heaven, send us a spirit of wisdom to purify our hearts, mind, and soul, and make us truly your children, faithful to your teachings, through Christ our Lord, your Amen. Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our Lord and for the cause of the Holy Church. Be pleased to accept, Lord God, the sacrifice that we offer with sincere heart and the feast of blessed Mary Eugene of the child Jesus. Faithful to his teaching, we offer ourselves completely to you as we celebrate and praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, show support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, Lord, with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he, o may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Blessed Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus, and with all the Carmelite saints and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the people you have gained for your own. Listen to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please all stand for the prayer after communion. Let us pray. All powerful God, may this communion at the heavenly table strengthen with power from on high all those who celebrate the feast of Blessed Mary Eugene of the Child Jesus. Help us to keep the gift of faith in its fullness and to walk on the path of salvation offered us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. We'll listen first to the introduction to the act of entrustment. And now, the Superior General of Notre Dame de Vie Women's Branch, Ms. Emmanuel Rupert, will pronounce an act of entrustment to the Blessed Mother. You are invited to pray along silently. After the act of entrustment, the Superior General of the Men's Branch, Mr. Eduardo Calasanz, and the Superior General of the Priestly Branch, Father Emmanuel Hirschauer, will say a few words. Immaculate Virgin, Mother of God, and our Mother, whom we lovingly call Mother of Life, we join the people of Asia in offering our joyful gratitude for your maternal care and presence in the Church. We celebrate in you the great marvels of God, who unceasingly pours out his mercy to heal and to save us and the whole humanity, wounded by sin and afflicted by evil. With you, we praise and thank God for the gift of Blessed Father Marie Eugène, your beloved son, Carmelite priest, a witness of your merciful love, faithful to his mission to lead people along the paths of prayer to union with God. O Mother of Life, Notre Dame de Vie, accept with maternal benevolence this act of entrustment that we make in faith before you today. To you, we entrust our whole being, loved and gifted by God, with all our weaknesses. To you, we entrust the youth with their thirst for true life and deep joy. To you, we entrust our families and communities, our longing for peace and reconciliation, and our hopes amid darkness and trials. To you, we entrust the Notre Dame de Vie Institute of Asia with its yearnings for fidelity to the Spirit, with its hope for fecundity, so that you, O Mary, may be truly loved, and with its deep gratitude for your constant motherly solicitude and care for it. To you, we entrust all peoples of Asia, Bless and strengthen all our desires for true harmony and care for our common home. Sustain and guide us all on the path to holiness. Intercede for us, your children, so that one with your Son Jesus, as brothers and sisters, we may walk together in loving and serving him. United with Pope Francis and the whole Church, we pray. 
teach us your special love for the little and the poor, for the excluded and the suffering, for sinners and the wounded of heart. Gather all people under your maternal protection and give us all to your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Please be seated for a while. This year, 2022, we are celebrating the centenary of the ordination to the priesthood of Father Marie Eugène of the Child Jesus. He was ordained as a priest for the Diocese of Rodez on February 4, 1922. Weeks later, on February 24, 1922, he entered the novitiate of the Carmelite Order in Avon. So this year, we are also celebrating the centenary of his entrance to Carmel. The young Henri Grielou never met a Carmelite friar when he was young, even when he was a seminarian. He met the Carmelite sisters, the nuns, but never a Carmelite friar. He didn't know their way of life, except perhaps by a few books. He knew and loved Therese of the Child Jesus, who was not yet canonized at that time. But what struck him was God's call. On the night of December 13 and 14, he was reading what he called an insipid, a mindless, short biography of St. John of the Cross. And it struck him. He felt that God was calling him to Carmel. And so, when we are celebrating this centenary of Father Marie Eugène's entrance to Carmel, we are really celebrating God's call, God's surprising call 
we are also celebrating Father Marie Eugene's response to this call. A generous response. A response in faith. He didn't exactly know where he was going. He didn't exactly know or understand what it was all about. But what was clear for him was, first of all, God's call. And secondly, his response of love. On the day of his entrance, February 24, 1922, he read the text of the Gospel of St. John, John 3, 1-8, the meeting with Nicodemus. And Father Marie Eugène wrote in his journal that same day, I must be completely reborn in this new life. I must be completely transformed in order to find God in this new existence. It is the light that Jesus has placed for me in these words of the gospel. I do not know how it is that God has led me here. Neither do I know where God wants to lead me. All I know is that it is His voice that I hear. And later on, years after, looking back on this same day, His entrance to Carmel, February 24, 1922, He says, the year of my novitiate was a year of betrothal, of manifestations of the Holy Spirit. It was a play of light and flames and fire. I was crazy with love. I wanted only love. I was asking only for love. And I think this is the meaning of what we are celebrating today. God's call, Father Marie Eugene's response, they are an invitation for us. Are we crazy with love? Are we crazy enough to respond to the call of love. For love always calls us. Love is calling us. Are we crazy enough to respond to this call? What is today to be a priest? We celebrate the centenary of the priestly ordination of Blessed Mary Eugene of the Child Jesus, who was at that time in 1922, Henry Grialou. It is a good occasion to rediscover the beauty of priesthood. Carmelite, spiritual master, writer, founder of Notre Dame de Vie Institute, Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus, according to many witnesses, was first and foremost a priest, a priest led by the Spirit. All his desire was to be united with Jesus, the only priest. Our life will be an intimate participation in the priesthood of our Lord. Long before the Second Vatican Council, Father Marie Eugene had the conviction that every Christian is priest, as he declared many times. He was fascinated by the beauty and power of baptismal grace. In this divine seed, there is a share in the priesthood of Christ, 
He who is our high priest, actually the only priest. Ministerial priesthood is dedicated to the service of this baptismal priesthood. To welcome the gift of self of people and to unite it with Christ's oblation in the Eucharist is the deeply joyful fulfillment of ministerial priesthood. But this would not be possible unless the Holy Spirit is at work. When one speaks about Blessed Father Mario Jean, immediately the Holy Spirit comes into the picture. Father Mario Jean said, I call him my friend. The sacerdotal branch of the Institute Notre Dame de Vie, to which I belong, has no other goal than divine friendship at the school of love of the Carmelite masters. Our deep hope as priests, diocesan priests, is to live out from within our daily tasks and missions friendship with the Spirit. Father Marie Eugene once declared, Every priest, before or after having received his priesthood, needs to make a period of solitude, to realize the living and active presence of the Holy Spirit in the Church and in his soul, and to learn to attune in docility his action to that of the Holy Spirit. He must then have all the dispositions to perfect this docility. May we all journey on this life-giving path, and may this centenary fosters our desire to be friends of the Spirit. Happy anniversary. God bless you. We will now listen to words of thanksgiving from Miss Lulu Domingo. On behalf of the Notre Dame de Vie Institute members of the three branches, the priests, laymen and women here present in Encanto, and all those who are joining us online, those in Korea, Japan, Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam, I would like to say thank you, Monsignor Dennis Thank you. Thank you for presiding at the Mass and for honoring us with your presence. Thank you for your homily, full of wisdom and practical insights, encouraging us to be faithful, to give God's love to the world and to all. Thank you, Bishop Emeritus Benjamin Almoneda, here present, and Bishop Francis Vira Arpondratana of Chiang Mai, Thailand, joining us online. Thank you to all the priests concelebrants. Thank you, Ms. Emmanuel Ruper, for drawing us towards Mary, Mother of Life. Thank you, Mr. Eduardo Calasanz and Father Emmanuel Hirschauer for your inspiring and challenging messages. 
to all of you who celebrated with us online, the Carmelite family, the members of the Asian Conference of Secular Institutes, the NDV Associates, the couples of NDB, our families, Mount Carmel School of Infanta, Colegio de Santa Monica de Angat, Father Marie Eugene Family Development Foundation, and Mother of Life Center. To all of you and to our dear benefactors, colleagues, and friends, thank you. Arigato. Come on. Merci beaucoup. Salamat po. Shieshe. To the Asian team which organized and prepared this Eucharistic celebration, thank you. For the prayers and self-giving of each one and our Encanto workers to make this celebration beautiful, festive, and meaningful, thank you. A special thanks to our choir, the Mother of Life Center Efata Generation, to Maria Teresa Tobias for the flowers, and to Vincent Floro and his team for the live coverage making it possible for all of us to be one in thanksgiving for this centenary celebration. And finally, we thank God our Father as we say. We thank you for giving blessed Father Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus to the church to Carmel, to Notre Dame de Vie Institute. May his mission continue to be fruitful in the church, especially in the Church of Asia. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please all stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with yours. Spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. May I ask bless Bishop Ben to bless the people with me. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.